Genuine question. Why don't more people use mixers as audio interfaces? I mean, it kind of makes sense to me. This is a Behringer X-Air 16, 18, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and it makes sense. It costs like 300 bucks, 400 bucks. I don't remember, I didn't buy it. Um, it has 16 XLR inputs, all phantom powered. You can control it on a computer and uh, run it in just like any normal interface. Why, why isn't this a more common solution? Now I understand that most people don't need uh, 16 channels of audio, um, and that's probably why, and I'm certain these preamps aren't uh, as high quality as something you might get in an interface with two channels that cost the same amount of money, but uh, if you listen to this. I don't know, I mean, I think that sounds pretty good. Uh, certainly better than anything the Beatles ever recorded. Um, but of course, uh, while well, the Beatles had inferior recording equipment, uh, they apparently had something because they're rich and uh, <laughs> I'm poor. I quite like the song though, so if you do, uh, contribute to uh, making State of Occurrence the next Beatles. And uh, I'll go along with that. But seriously, um, growing up, uh, this always seemed like the most obvious option to me. When I first started to get into recording when I was 15, 16, uh, really get into recording, uh, I was a drummer, and I was a guitar player, and I was a songwriter, I and mean, I was a bass player, and I needed channels. And I was also 16 years old, so I couldn't necessarily afford a whole bunch of stuff. So I bought this here, Tascam US 16X08. Um, what those numbers mean, uh, there's eight XLR inputs and uh, 16 total inputs. So if you're uh, like me and uh, cheap and maybe 14, 15, 16 years old, uh, what you can do is go online and uh, buy these pile microphones uh, that are fake SM57s and come with a XLR to quarter inch cord, uh, which undoubtedly isn't, isn't the best thing in the world at all. Uh, but you can plug it into the back, which means you still leave open your eight XLR inputs for various other things. So you can put three crappy pile microphones on the snare and two toms. Um, and you still have XLRs open for your vocals, your two guitars, your bass, uh, your overhead microphone, your drum microphone, uh, uh, anything else, really. Um, yeah, and that would sound something like this. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, certainly that sounds better than anything Bob Dylan recorded in the uh, 60s and 70s. Uh, clearly, he had something that I don't, though, because uh, he is rich and uh, <laughs> I am poor. So if you want to contribute to the state of occurrence, uh, making money and uh, living the dream fund, you know, subscribe to the channel and uh, listen to the songs on, on Spotify and uh, Apple Music and uh, Amazon. You can also buy them. No one does that anymore, uh, including myself. I've become one of those people. I just think something like this is the perfect solution for the person who wants to make a little studio set up and uh, likes live recordings. Like my dream, I love, I, I'd rather record a record live than do it in stems or whatever. I don't have any friends, so I have to do it in stems, uh, but I fake it much like this video. Looking for love and looking for light Looking for more than just getting by jump on And that was 
recorded with this. And uh, like I said, I think it sounds pretty darn good. Uh, it's, a, it's a cheap thing, but it has 16 XLR inputs, which is great. There are a couple of annoying things. Uh, you can only control it over over Wi-Fi with an app on the iPad, or you can connect it to your computer, but then you have to be connected to the network to change anything. And that's annoying because when I'm watching, when I'm making tracks, I want to watch YouTube videos or or use the internet, but not use this. And I'm, I know if you're smart, you can connect this into your network, but I freaking hate networks. I hate LAN and I hate anything that has to do with a Cat5 freaking cable, and I don't ever want to deal with any of it. Ever. So I deal with it. I use my phone. <laughs> Other cons you might run into if you're using something like this. Um, honestly, I don't even know. If you go out and have a gig, you can use this. This is literally a soundboard. You can control it from an iPad or from your phone or something, and I've done that multiple times. I'd <laughs> I'd rather carry this around than um, than a soundboard. Yeah, it's great to have a soundboard, but honestly, I'm stingy. I'm a sound guy as well as a musician, so I don't trust anyone that I can afford to run sound. So I always just end up running sound for myself, which is great because I can have the soundboard right in front of me on an iPad while I'm performing or or doing anything like that. Now, if you're type of music or type of production style does not require more than two, four, six, eight channels, then yeah, you could probably get some better preamps and uh, uh, in a smaller package that might interface a bit better with your computer. This is a Dell. I normally record on a MacBook Pro, uh, but the Dell's plugged in because I use it to control my speakers and uh, jam banging tunes. Uh, some of them including my own state of occurrence on Spotify, YouTube, Apple Music. Um, then yeah, maybe you could get a smaller thing with better preamps, but if you like playing in a band and you have a drum kit that, you know, you need at least, worst case scenario, four mics, uh, but if you're making rock music, honestly, you want those toms mic'd. You want two mics on the snare. You want more than a mono overhead, and by then you're looking at eight, eight, eight inputs. And then if you have an extra band and a whole extra band playing with you, uh, then you've got room left, and you can run auxiliary outputs. You can run separate mix out of those. It, it's just a great thing. I I don't see why more people don't use interfaces, mixers as interfaces. It just makes sense. This thing is cheap, and it runs into the thing. And let's be honest, the preamps aren't my biggest issue when it comes to mixing and mastering and producing songs. That's me. I have learned everything I've learned on YouTube. Um, so if I was actually recording something, sure, I'd go to a real studio. But hey, if you listen to this... I think that sounds pretty damn good uh, for YouTube, for me, having fun. I'd love for this to be my job, but it's not. Uh, and it, this this is great. Uh, yeah, so if you're like I was when I was 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, uh, look into something like this. I think it's, it's a good opportunity to get multiple channels in. And if you like playing in the band, if you like recording drums live, if you like doing things live, it just makes sense. Mixers are beautiful these days because you just run out the USB into the computer and you get some lovely features. Uh, I will say I've ran into some issues with this Dell when I'm tracking multiple people, but I, I honestly... I, I, I think that's a PC thing. Don't tell the Apple guys I said that. Um, I love 
Macs, and I love PCs for different things. If I'm editing a video in Premiere, don't even send me near a Mac. Uh, but if I'm recording audio, it, we all know you're better off with a Mac. Uh, so yeah, different strokes for different folks and different uh, tech for different sets. That doesn't make any sense. So I end the video by just saying, if you're looking into building a studio, give give a mixer a try. I think it's a pretty good thing. And you know, look at all these channels you get to play with. You can have some fun. And I know that that also means you have to buy, buy more mics, uh, or you could get a job at a church um, and just take their mics because they don't they don't they don't know. By take I mean borrow, of course. And I'm, I've got it running out into these these PreSonus studio monitors, and then also into my bass amp as a banging sub. Uh, and it's it's a it's a pretty it's a pretty lovely time. I enjoy the setup, and I think you might too. Um, I don't see enough people doing this, I don't think. And uh, thanks for watching. Subscribe, listen to the music, etc. I love you, and as always. This has been a video by State of Occurrence uh, on June the 6th. It's already June. Gosh dang it. Uh, listen to the music. Subscribe. Uh, <laughs> support me on Patreon. I don't have a Patreon. Uh, send Cash App. I don't have a Cash App. Uh, just listen to music. Have a good time. Enjoy life. And uh, I'll talk to you later. <laughs> I think that's going to be my thing gratuitous, unnecessarily long outros. I like it. You can go now. Honestly, I'm just trying to get this video over 10 minutes. Is that still a thing? Are you still supposed to make YouTube videos more, longer than 10 minutes? I don't know. How's, how's the family been? Kids? They've been good. Joey, nope, not Joey. Um, shoot. Kevin. He's still in school? Oh, he died. Shoot. Um. Oh, I'm getting a phone call. Left my phone downstairs. I think this bit has gone on long enough. Uh,